This is video 3.2. In it, we will solve a classic problem in two-dimensional projectile motion. The question. We have a projectile which is launched with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal. And we would like to find the projectile's maximum height, the duration of the projectile's flight, and the range of the projectile, that is, how far the projectile travels before coming into contact with the ground. We start the problem by finding the horizontal and vertical components of the projectile's velocity. The picture is as follows. We have an arrow that's 30 meters per second in length, making an angle of 25 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The horizontal component of the velocity is adjacent to the angle, so we use cosine. As discussed in the previous video, 3.1, you multiply the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. This gives 27.19 meters per second. Although we only have two significant figures in the angle, we're going to include a couple extra significant figures now and then round the answer once we get to the end. The vertical component is found similarly, except in this case you use sine. Now to find the maximum height, we'll use the following equation. The initial velocity is 12.68 meters per second in the vertical direction. The final velocity is 0 meters per second at the top of its path, and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Because the x and the y component are independent, we can just work with the vertical component and use the equations of one-dimensional motion. Rearranging the equation, we can solve for the displacement, delta x. Plugging in the known information, this gives 8.2 meters. This is the maximum height of the projectile. Now we'll find the time that the projectile spins in flight. We'll use the following equation. We have the initial vertical velocity, the final vertical velocity, which is zero at the top of its path, and the acceleration. Plugging this in gives us the amount of time it takes for the projectile to reach the top of its path. This is half of the time it takes for the projectile to go up and come back down. So we multiply the answer by 2, and when we take account of the significant figures in the problem, we have an answer of 2.6 seconds. Now we want to find the range. This is quite easy now that we know the amount of time that the projectile spins in flight. We simply multiply that time by the horizontal velocity. Now remember that the horizontal velocity is independent of the vertical velocity, so it's constant throughout time because there are no forces in the x direction. We multiply the horizontal component of the velocity by the air time, and when we take account of the significant figures in the problem, we get a range of 70 meters. And that concludes video 3.2. Check out PhysicsX on the app stores. This revolutionary physics app for smartphones and tablets contains over 100 videos and 500 multiple choice questions designed by education experts. It's been proven to improve scores for intro college physics, AP physics, MCAT physics, and more. Just look for the blue icon.